Well, a few years ago, I recorded some thoughts about the development of my communications game artworks, which I started making 50 years ago. And since I made those notes, since I recorded those thoughts, things of course have moved on with the internet, with augmented reality, and so on and so forth. So here are some thoughts about what's happened since then and where we're going next. Perhaps just to rehearse a few things about the beginning. When I made Communications Game in the very first place, it was a machine really, a machine that was a piece of art. And I defined it by its function, by how it worked. Not by how it looked or felt, not by what colour it was, but just by how it worked. So it was a conceptual definition, and I made that very clear, that it could be made in many different ways, providing it functioned as defined in my specification. So, quite recently, in a couple of exhibitions which have included retrospective aspects of my work, I've wanted to show a communications game, or people have asked me to show a communications game. And what I've done is worked on reconstructions of it, functionally the same, actually not looking all that different, but working not from logic circuits which I built using uh, soldering iron and pieces of wire and so on, but using computers, very small computers, uh, that could be hidden, that performed the same function as the logic circuits originally. So I've shown this, for example, in uh, Primary Codes, an exhibition in Rio de Janeiro in 2015, and also in a retrospective of all of my work in Leicester in 2017. Uh, and in other places too. So I'll come back to this in a few moments, but this notion that the work is not tied to the physical reality of how it appears is really quite important in this area of communications making art. So I said a few of these things uh, when I made my earlier remarks, but Let's think what happened next. Well, through a few steps, through what happened uh, in Oxford that I mentioned before, uh, through finding that we had not just local area networks, but also the internet and also the World Wide Web, it became possible to make quite different kinds of work using the same concept as we saw in communications games. But it also mean, became possible to make much more complex versions of the communications game idea. Not to make too much of it, but I added another stream of my work to communications game to make a series of works which were called Cities Tango. The other stream of my work was mostly embedded in the works known as shaping form. These are interactive, generative works. So there are two functions there really. One is that they're generative. So they're rule-based, they change forever according to those rules. Uh, the colors change, the timing changes, the shapes change and so on. Um, but they're interactive and the way that the interaction works is that the rules themselves are modified as a result of the interaction, so that over time they behave differently. So I added that to the communications idea and made a works in this games, works, games, called Cities Tango. The first versions of this idea was a, a set of pieces that were two part. So one part in one city and another part in another city. Each of them rather like shaping form, 
interactive, generative, interacting with the people in front of the work. But the two uh, items, the two pieces connected together over the internet, for example, uh, one in Berlin and one in Melbourne in Australia, another one where one piece was in Belfast and the other was in Sydney, for example. Obviously lots of challenges are there because the time differences, the uh, latency of the movement of data across the internet and so on and so forth. But the key thing was that what was happening in one location was influencing what was happening in the other location. So that people looking at the work in Sydney were seeing something that was partly determined by what was happening in Belfast, for example, in that case. In order to strengthen the links between different locations, I did something quite uh, innovative for me. I moved away from pure abstraction and I introduced images of the distant location. So that in Sydney, people saw images of Belfast and vice versa. I treated those images quite in an abstract way. So I had like slices of photographs that would be used to give a sense of the other location and what was happening in the other location. And then on addition, in addition to that, I added something else, which was the live images. So that suddenly something would happen, someone would move fast in one location and that would trigger uh, the showing of what was actually going on in that distant place at that time. So in various ways, the communications idea was enhanced, enhanced using the generative art idea of shaping form uh, and the changing over time of shaping form into these works uh, using two city locations. Of course, that was only step one. Since then, I've been working in more elaborate versions of this. A few works I made in collaboration with Sean Clark, uh, and we made pieces which had more than two locations, three, four, potentially ten or twenty, but in practice so far only three or four locations all connecting together. So that rather like the early communications game, there would be a set, a small set, a handful of interactive elements, of interactive people, of interactive audiences relating to one another, making an artwork by their very communication with one another. This was kind of exploring the internet, exploring communications in art, not by providing face-to-face -face video chat, but by providing the kind of abstract interaction that we saw in the early 1970 or so communication game artworks. And now I'm looking further. We don't just have to think about screens with cameras or microphones to collect data. We're in an era now, not new, but because of the pricey equipment, I suppose, becoming very interesting and fashionable and doable today of virtual and augmented reality. So now there's another layer that can be added. People can wear glasses, wear a headset, and in that headset they can not only see whatever they could have seen without it, but virtual objects can be added. So instead of the screen uh, being imposed within a space, it now works the other way around. That the art objects, in my case very often blocks of colour, are placed within the space that someone is existing in. So within the space, instead of just seeing that space, that room, that piece of a city square, they see virtual objects, virtual objects that are artworks. But because these headsets can be connected across the internet, so you can have a set of augmented reality headsets worn in different parts of the same city, 
worn in different cities, all connected together through the internet. They also see and interact with and influence one another, making a community, possibly an international community, but certainly a community across space, in different spaces, tying that space together, making us think that here we have interactive communication artwork exploiting and exploring the implications of the internet.